I have a shuffle deck of cards here. As you can see, it's a good selection of cards. In fact, I'll go ahead and just um, shuffle them up further, I guess. You might not uh, believe that they're random. <laughs> so let's go ahead and give it a, a couple of shuffles here. And then uh, this effect today can be done with any even sized packet of cards. Now, fewer than six is not very interesting. It, it, it will work. And more than 12 takes a little bit too long. So somewhere between six and 12 cards, but an even number. So if you were here, I'd have you kind of randomly state an even number between six and 12. So why don't we do maybe a 10? So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Okay, I think you'd have to agree that's a, a very good random selection of cards here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to use something called the under down shuffle. Now, if you've studied Bessie sequences or quasi Bessie sequences, which is not what we're actually going to use here today, um, but the under down shuffle is one of the only ones that will actually destroy that structure. So in that way, it's it's kind of a destructive little guy <laughs> when it comes to mixing cards. Um, so this is how it works. You go under, down, 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 under, down. Last one goes on top. Okay, now at this point, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you the top card. And so that is the special card for you to remember. And I'll go ahead, I'll go ahead and turn away. So take a look at that card and remember it. That's your special card. Okay, and now at this point, uh, since, you know, well, you saw the card and you know where it is here. Let's see if you can kind of follow it through some mixing here. This is called a Charlie Shuffle. Uh, we can also do a Klondike Shuffle. It's kind of a fun one. This is where you take the top and bottom cards off as one. Um, from there, we can deal out into two piles. If I can not drop the cards, left and right, your choice. Another time, okay. Um, a note to you as a performer, you can do as many of these uh, left-right shuffles as you like with random stacking decided by the spectator. Boy, I keep dropping the cards here, <laughs> left on right. Uh, we can even do an even or odd up jog. These are all optional things you can do if you'd like. Strip out the even position cards. How would you, how would you like these stacked? Right on left. Okay, uh, we can do a feral shuffle. Have you seen a feral shuffle before? Uh, this is where you, you divide the cards exactly in half, and then you just perfectly interlace the cards. So that's called a feral shuffle. You can do that as well, as many of those as you like, actually. Okay, and then there's other mixing you can do, actually. Uh, but at this point, I think what we'll do is we'll go ahead and just Klondike pairs of cards to the table. I think that's what we'll do next. And now we're going to take a look at what we've done here. Okay, so we have, see, a 10 and a 5, a 10 and an 8, it's kind of interesting, a 5 and a 4, a 7 and a 10, what? <laughs> There's 10s everywhere. And then we have, have a, what the heck here? We have two J's here. We have a Joker. Uh, did you see a Joker in there? Where in the world did the Joker come from? And then it's paired with a Jack, of all things. Interesting. Um, well, I was hoping to be able to find your card, but in some ways, I think the Joker's made my job really easy. Um, number one, how in the world did he get there? But I think he actually tracked down your card. Is this the card that you saw? And if I've done everything correctly, this should be the card that you saw, <laughs> Jack of Diamonds. Okay, so very good. Well, let me show you how this is done. Um, it truly will work with any even size packet of cards. That is actually the case. Now, um, one thing you weren't aware of probably is when I showed the cards, um, I didn't quite show you all of them, like way up here. Okay, and so with a little bit of practice, it's not too hard to kind of quote show the cards, but not show the very, very top cards.
Okay, so you can kind of hide the Joker that way. Uh, that was what I decided to do. But but I did follow it up with a riffle shuffle. Well, this is where you just retain the quote top stock, or here it's just the top card. So you just retain the top card at the top. There it is still. So you just make sure the car uh, the cards on the right fall last, kind of like that. Okay. So the Joker's still on top. That's where you need the Joker to be. Now it is true we can deal out any even number. Maybe we'll do eight this time. Uh, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. And then do you remember what I did next? Yeah, I did the under down shuffle next. And you can point out the fact that it truly is a very destructive shuffle. Okay, so you do under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down. Last one goes on top. Okay, so let me show you part of the secret right now. Okay, let me, man, where are these tens coming from? I needed to move cards to the bottom, I guess. I have a whole block of tens here. Okay, but let me show you what is the case. Maybe you can spot it already. Um, now, this is the card I would have shown you, right? I guess I, d I forgot to show you that, but I, I do the down under, and then I show you the top. Let's go back in time. So I did the down under, and then I show you this card. This is your special card. Okay, well, let me just show you where your special card is in relation to the Joker that started at the top. If it bothers you to have it upside down like it bothers me, we can fix it there. Uh, but what will be the case for any even size packet is if you perform that under down, the new top card here will be in a cyclic arrangement or position relative to the Joker. Okay, so if you notice here, we have one, two, three, four. That's like one cycle. And then we have the Joker five and a couple of tens. Okay, so if you focus on the first four and then the second four, the spectator's card of eight of clubs is in the same position within its set of four as the joker is within its set of four. Okay? And so we say that they're in a cyclic relationship. And they will always be that case for any even size packet. That's the amazing thing. If you did what I did to get here, this will always be the case, whether it's four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, 12, 14, or 228 cards, if you had a deck that big, uh, this will be the case. So right now, the Spectator's card, Eight of Clubs, and that special card, the Joker, are in a cyclic relationship. Well, if that's the case, what it means is you can randomly, you can randomly cut the cards. It won't hurt that relationship. Um, better still, you can perform a Charlier shuffle. Okay, so it's a bit more convincing. Okay, so it's still in a, quote, cyclic relationship. You can see that right here. Okay, so right now the Joker, see where the Joker is? It's at the kind of bottom of the top four. And the eight of clubs is at the bottom of the bottom four, right? So they're still in a cyclic relationship. Well, to change this to a mirrored packet, those who have watched my channel or are aware of my channel, you know that the Klondike Shuffle will take a cyclic, in fact, what it's called a two-cycle. What we had there was actually, quote, a two-cycle because there was a pattern that repeat, repeated twice. It will put those cards into a mirrored relationship. Okay, so now they're going to be like on opposite ends relative to, to the center. Okay, so once they're in a mirrored relationship, you have the stay stack principle. And in particular, particular, that says you can deal out the cards into two piles with random stacking, and it won't change the fact that they're in this mirrored relationship. None of this will hurt anything. Okay, and I'll show you that they're still in a, quote, mirrored relationship. Okay, so check out here. So if you come in, so these are these two are in a mirrored relationship, then those two, and then there they are, Joker and the Eight of Clubs, okay? Now, once they're in a mirrored relationship, you can actually bring those special pairs together by way of another Klondike Shuffle. 
And at this point, I guess we only have eight cards this time, uh, right? Um, and at this point, we've paired up that Joker from the very beginning with the Spectator's Noted card, okay? Um, so I lucked out in the sense of, I think it was the last one I revealed, because we won't know, like, where our special pair is, okay? There's the silly tens again. Yeah, see? It was, uh, it, for us, last time it was right here. Uh, this time it's right there. So you could re uh, reveal that right away, or maybe when you peek it, you say, well, let's hold off on that one and then show this one. And this would just allow you to kind of show the Joker last if you would like to, but it actually wouldn't matter uh, because the spectator is going to be surprised that there's a Joker in there at all because they believe that they saw the cards well mixed and there was no Joker in sight. And now, on top of that, the Joker has actually tracked down the Spectator's card. So that's kind of the amazing second punch to the whole thing. The Joker has made it easy for you as the performer to identify the Spectator's noted card. Okay, so this will work for you every time for any even size packet. Just follow those steps and you're going to look like an absolute card wizard. So thank you for watching and take a look at other videos on the Absolute Math Magic channel.